Hi everyone, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, doctor, lawyer, turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 10, seven, and five. If you are new here, welcome. If you're interested in videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD, and living a more essentialist lifestyle, that's basically what I talk about here. So be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. In today's video, I'm really excited to show you a new workbook line from Evan Moore called Top Student for Grade 1. Now, this workbook line runs from Grade 1, I believe, through Grade 6. And if you want to look at any other grade levels, you can click on my affiliate link in the description box down below. What that means is that if you purchase something from Evan Moore after clicking on my affiliate link, I do get a commission back and that allows me to continue making these videos and to continue the channel. So I really do appreciate that support. So Top Student is really interesting because it includes a variety of different topic areas from everything from STEM science, computer science, social and emotional learning, learning, social studies, reading, writing, math, phonics, handwriting, grammar and punctuation, and spelling and vocabulary. So you've got everything in here. And they are correlated to current standards, but that does not mean that it is like stuck on them. It just means that if you needed in your jurisdiction to write down what standard you were teaching at any given time, Evan Moore makes it really, really simple to do that. So I have added these little tabs here. I just actually cut some um, tabs that I had in half and just put them in and they actually fit perfectly down the side to show you the different topic areas here. When you open the book, there is a place for the student to put their name and there is a clear table of contents that goes through the different topic areas. I like this book for a summer review book. I also like this book for just daily review, like a morning starter or something like that, just to keep things going. You could do one page in every section every day. You could let the student choose their own adventure. If you needed to have more practice in any particular area, for example, spelling, you could turn right to that section and work on that. It's really choose your own adventure in this book. So in the handwriting section for grade one, it starts off with just simple copying. So you have a section here to trace the letters and then a little space to put on your own letters. And it goes through the entire alphabet for both capital and lowercase. And then it has a couple of things where you can make a list and write things from a list. And that is it for handwriting. And you'll notice the sections are all in different colors. So if you look at the binding of this book, you can see that the colors all change. In the phonics section, you have a lot of things for beginning and ending sounds. It'll give you a little letter bank so that you can find them. The difference between hard and soft consonant sounds, the ending sounds of words, the letters Q and X, which are a little strange, S and ES. It goes through the concept of syllables and short vowels. So as you can see, it's a great review book. They don't really hit the same topic too many times, but you have this good review of things that you're probably hitting in your dedicated English curricula. So I really love this. I think it's a really nice way to pick out areas of weakness that your child might be having, things that you thought they might have known, but they don't know. And then you can dig into it a little bit further later. You have long I, long O, letter pairs, blends, final consonant bent blends, digraphs, and then you have a little bit of an activity here. And this is like a social emotional uh, learning activity. Pretend that when you feel happy, your cup is full. When you feel unhappy, your cup is empty. Now it's time to fill your cup. So here from this word bank, you can get ideas of everything that makes you happy. And I really like the idea that you can combine social emotional learning with writing, reading, comprehension, um, phonics. Did you write a word that has a short vowel sound? Yes or no. Incorporating the idea that we're learning all these things for a real reason. Words matter. Your heart matters. All of that is, is lovely to me. So here there's a craft that you can do where you pick out four words or phrases from your cup and you write one in each circle and then you can color in a, uh, a butterfly. The grammar and punctuation section is in orange. Again, some of the pages are very swift where here you're just recording like what noun is shown in the picture. And then you have a writing activity here. Here you have um, plurality, the spelling of different plural words. You have proper nouns, possessive nouns, adjectives. Again, it moves really swiftly. It's a great way to review. If you're the type of parent who's doing a lot more talking uh, instruction as opposed to workbook instruction, this is a really nice light way to confirm that your child is understanding the concept that you're trying to present to them. So it doesn't go on and on, but you do have enough to assess understanding. The spelling section here has, again, a lot of spelling words. You can 
group short O and long O vowels. You have some filling in here. The Evan Moore spelling books do this too, just to let you know, where they will have different shaped rectangles so the students can be alerted to like what letters might fit to make their spelling words. They have finding misspelled words, compound words, antonyms, synonyms. There's some vocabulary practice here. And again, at the end of this, you have a social emotional learning lesson where you draw eyes on your face, your nose and mouth, you draw a hat that you would like to wear. We can use our words to describe the picture at the end to show that, again, words relate to real life concepts. The, the re reading section is really well done in my opinion because you have things where you have sequences where you have to put the, the story in order. Um, there's things that incorporate science concepts also like planting or sea turtles. There's baby sea turtle art here where you get to cut out a turtle shell and, and make it onto a plate. And here's all your little pieces for the turtle head and everything. There's also discriminating between real and make-believe. Some of the questions are multiple choice, which is a good test skill for students to learn, um, even at a young age. So for example, again, here, there's some multiple choice. There's also some questions that you can do orally, or you can have the child write this down, depending on their skill level. As a fourth year homeschooler, I don't fight about things like this with my children anymore. If I'm doing a writing activity, it's important to me that they do the writing. But if I'm doing an activity where what I want them to know is how to interpret a story in a picture, it's not so important to me that they write this down. It's more important that I can assess their knowledge. And if they want to do that verbally with me, that's fine. Um, sometimes I feel like resistance to workbooks is this concept that people have mistakenly that you have to make the child write everything that is shown in a workbook, but really you can often just talk about the concepts and still be doing an effective review. Here you have this idea of cause and effect and sequence in a story, reading closely so that you can actually understand the concepts and the main ideas of stories, what a title is, and then again a social and emotional learning section here where it's talking about feelings and what they're good at, etc. The writing section here has different opportunities to write things like lists and sentences, descriptions, putting sentences in order, giving reasons for something like your favorite animal and why, um, the difference between telling your an opinion or a make-believe story. And again, it ends with a social and emotional learning activity about thoughts. And now we come to mindful moments, which is all about mindful practice. I cannot tell you how impressed I am that Evan Moore chose to incorporate this in a workbook format because it makes it a lot more accessible to people to be able to do it on a regular basis when it's in a workbook format this way. So there's QR codes here where you can actually listen to an audio sample for meditation exercises. And that's just an amazing thing to me. The math section here uh, has a lot of simple addition concepts, subtraction concepts, skip counting. Um, some things are just different ways of making a number. And I'm just going to flip through this quickly. It's very colorful. It goes through place value, comparison of numbers, ordering numbers, uh, counting by tens, bar graphs, money, time, patterns, some word problems, some uh, dot drawings that create patterns, shapes, some block problems. Again, with workbooks, you don't have to keep this two-dimensional. If you have blocks like this, get them out before the child does this lesson and let them actually create these shapes. There's so many ways that workbooks can inspire us to make the day more interesting. Logic problems, again, uh, some tallying and bar graphs, and then spatial reasoning to create like puzzles on their own. There's also a computer science section in this workbook. It's not incredibly long. It's only about 12 pages, but it gives an idea to the students of how computers work, what an algorithm is, how the stepwise sequence is really important for coding and patterns are important for coding. And it goes through different ways of introducing that idea of how computers work to students. And then again, even in the computer section, there's a social and emotional learning section where they talk about emojis. Less. The science section is about 25 or 26 pages long. It goes through vibrations. And it also includes a little experiment that you could do with simple things that you probably have at home. There's also a little cutting and pasting for order. There's a reading experiment, grouping, 
thermometers, science jobs, being a vet, living things, plants, animals and their parents, animal traits, animal patterns, and then again, a social emotional learning activity about what you would do and what you think about various jobs, etc. The next section is STEM, which of course stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. And this is a really fun section. It has different topics per STEM challenge, and it has really simple things that you can do outside, like learning how a shadow works, building a shelter that blocks sunlight and makes shade for two small toys. They give you a suggested materials list. They give you a design process. You have to do the design process then, plan, create, test, and how did it work? Again, if the student wants to write all this out, that's great. If they want to talk to you about it, they're still getting that process, right? The idea of how it works to engineer something. Vibrations and music is another STEM challenge where you have to make maracas with different sounds. And then there is a social and emotional learning section where you talk about how did that STEM challenge feel? Think about the shelter you worked. If you worked with a different person and you disagreed, how did that go? Things like that. The social studies section talks about different types of structures that your student's going to encounter, different types of rules, what voting is, how people make rules, what money is, what history is, objects in a museum, how things change over time, different inventions, different places and different customs, the Holy Festival in India, and their social emotional skill is basically talking about what we celebrate versus other people um, things that don't belong in the picture, the difference in birthday celebrations in different countries. And then there's another mindful moment here where you have another track that you can listen to and do a meditation activity. And at the very end, there is a complete section devoted to the social and emotional learning. Although you have independent lessons scattered throughout all the others, they have one section just for that. And it talks about feelings a lot, what you can do to help out people you know and the world around you. Um, how you can show your feelings, different types of conflicts and how to best approach them. You can make a little heart card for someone and then there's an answer key at the back if you need that. So it's all color coded. It also includes stickers for the workbook, which I know my daughters appreciate. And there is a fold out poster at the very end, all about different fun facts and some of the fun facts that you've read in here. So my girls really like little things like that. And if you have a classroom or something, that is a nice thing to put up on your wall. So I think that this is a really nice comprehensive workbook, especially if you're not a workbook person. It's a great way to sort of just dip in and out of this idea of like, how do we answer questions like this? Because even if you don't believe in workbooks, your kids will have to do things like fill in the blank, multiple choice. Those are all things that they will be tested on at some point, most likely. And a workbook like this is a great way to assess your students' strengths and weaknesses without beating them over the head with it. I really like this. I'm excited to use it with my daughter next year, my kindergartner who will become a first grader next year. So that is Top Student for Grade 1 by Evan Moore, you guys. I hope this was helpful to you. If you want to see this workbook or any other Evan Moore workbook in more detail, be sure to check out the link in my description box down below. As always, I really do appreciate your time. Thank you so much for spending some of it with me, and I wish you the very best day.